Good afternoon. Uh, good practice out here today, uh, the final practice before we go on full pads tomorrow. I thought the, the players came out here with excellent energy. I thought the coaches had good energy, and we really flew around. I think we're learning how to practice faster, more physical, and stay on our feet. Uh, we're not perfect yet. We're going to work on that every day, but I, I see conscious efforts by players to try to practice the right way so we can keep everybody up. And uh, like I said, I thought overall it was a really, really high energy practice, and I wasn't so sure it was going to be that this morning. So I thought the leaders on the team did a good job before they came out here and made sure that the team was ready. Questions? Any update on Lowry? No, we're, we're going to, you know, with something like this, I don't think you, you can reevaluate it every day. I think you got to okay. evaluate it in a couple days. And, and for us, it'll probably be after the scrimmage. Well, he won't be back before the first scrimmage. How does that change things in the, in the depth of the offensive line? Well, it gives opportunity to people. You know, Antoine obviously has played a lot of football for us last year. And I think you have guys now. Uh, like uh, like Marquise, who's going to have some opportunities. You got a guy like Brian Leone, who's going to have opportunities, and, and who knows? You know, we have some younger players. A guy like um, Dorian Miller, who is not really in the two deep right now, but I think in, at this stage of training camp, you have to be open to anything because he's still learning the offense, and and also some maybe some veterans who haven't played as much. A guy like Chris Fonte is going to have opportunities as well. What has Dorian showed you in the first week of camp? I think he's a big athletic guy, just like we thought he would be. He's in excellent shape. You know, for a freshman offensive lineman to, to get in that kind of cardiovascular shape over the summer is really a great accomplishment. And I thought he did a tremendous job in the summer program. Even though we're not allowed to be there, you see the results of it. When we do our conditioning test, he passed our conditioning test the first time, which was excellent. 18 110s is not an easy thing to do. And we knew he was a big, powerful guy, but he's, he's, he's in great shape, which, is a, which gives him a chance. Is there a chance that maybe if you can move Civil over there if some injuries occur? Can you move him back to court? Uh, Andre is very valuable to us as the third tackle. You know, I think I think that spot is where he is right now and really fighting to be a starting tackle. I don't know if it's in our best interest in the, in the long term you know, to move him back inside. I think at some point some of these younger guys got to continue to progress to the point where we feel comfortable putting him in the game. Would you like it to be a little hotter for the, uh, the guys that have to go to a little adversity out there with the heat? Or? I would. I would. I think it's been very mild so far in training camp, and at some point we'll have to we'll have to do something to create that if we have to. But you know, right now, you know, we're only a couple of days in. But as we get into later this week and next week, I hope that uh, the man above will will turn up the heat on us a little bit. What do you like about Caleb at guard? Since you played him at both tackle spots his first two years, why a better fitter or it's a, fits it, in the guard? It's such a it's such a different position, even though it's only one person over. At tackle, the game is, is much more about timing, whereas at guard, everything happens right now, and it's much more of a power game. And he's really built, his body type is really built to play inside. Now, he was the best left tackle we had last year, so that's where he played for us, and we had to do that. But I think as long as we can get really good production out of our left tackle, whether it's Keith, whether it's Andre, I think we'll be a better football team with Caleb Guard. Uh, what about Keith at left tackle? I mean, obviously it's the most important position, and he's a guy with probably the least experience. What did you see from him during spring specifically that made you say this is his, you know, this can be his job? It's really his progression in the weight room and the way he's changed his body and the strength that he's gained that gives him a chance. He always had the natural size and length to be an offensive tackle. And it was just a matter of him growing into his body so that he was strong enough to play at this level. You know, athleticism, uh, height, weight, speed, arm length, those will never be Keith's issues. We just need to give him some time to get strong enough. And he did that, and then it translated onto the field. And that's what we're really excited about. And on the other side, Taj's uh, body just makes more sense at right tackle because he had the more experience, right? Uh, Taj has a little more experience, but uh, for us, it's just, that part was about getting the best five on the field. You know, with Caleb at one guard, with Batim at center, and then either Antoine or Chris Muller at the other guard, and we need to get Taj on the field. You know, Taj gets better and better every day. And, and I see it on film. I, I really I saw something. I haven't watched this practice yet, but watching yesterday's practice, I see, I'm seeing Taj do things that I didn't see him all last year in terms of how he's moving his feet and the sequence with which he's moving his feet, which is, which is really good to see. He's becoming a student of the game on the offensive side of the ball. What's your thoughts on Muller a few days in at the uh, starting guard? I'm anxious to see him perform through the week and then at the end of the week in the scrimmage. You know, For a, a redshirt freshman who hasn't been in that environment yet, I think it's just a little premature. How competitive is this place kicking situation? Obviously, you have two guys who kicked in games. I think it's very competitive, yeah. and and right now I think they're dead even. I, th I think you know, both Federico and Borghese have come out here in training camp and have done a pretty good job hitting the ball. They've been a low one here and there, but 
the overall body of work so far, I think, has been good. I think we got a good competition there. There's no doubt we have two kickers who can win for us. Completely different, obviously, from last year when you didn't know about either one. Now at least you have a little body There's of work. There's no doubt. We had a true freshman and, and, and some other guys that I hadn't really seen yeah. yet. So now I've seen both these guys kicking games, and I was curious to see if one would separate from the other, and apparently they haven't. Kyle, Kyle, two more. Kyle given Maluski's history, is, is the second, third, and fourth day as almost important as, as that first day for him? I think every day David's out here, he'll get better and better. He'll have more and more confidence playing football again. It's, it, David's one of the smarter players we have in our program, so that part is not an issue. But I think every day he's out here and he plays, and then he, he goes back in and, and, he, and he does treatment, and he takes care of his body, and then he comes out the next day and he feels good uh, in his mind. It just gets better and better every day. How's uh, Des Peoples? Did he leave practice early? Or? Uh, Desmond, we're looking at him right now. I'll give you an update tomorrow. I'm not really sure sure if he'll be back or not. I'm not really even sure what the injury is just yet, but we took him in to evaluate him. Thanks, Thanks guys.